All right, guys, let's see how this works. This is my first one with the new tripod. So this might come out terrible. This might come out great or somewhere in the middle. Those are really our three options. So I don't know why I covered all of them, whatever. So uh, let's see if we can zoom in. Oh, we can zoom in. I just gotta readjust my paper, okay. So uh, Six Flags realizes that the only ride they can open during the coronavirus is a Ferris wheel, uh, since every cab is at least six feet apart. For safety reasons, the people in line must also stand six feet apart uh, and also ride alone while waiting in line for the hazmat team to disinfect each cab after a rider get, uh, no, I shouldn't, I, that's a typo. After a rider disembarks, Mr. Shreds notes that the height of the cab varies sinusoidally with time. Once every cab is loaded, the ride takes four minutes and completes 12 revolutions. He estimates the loading platform, uh, which is the same height as the lowest cab, is eight feet above the ground, and that the highest cab is 64 feet above the ground. When Mr. Shiraz is finally loaded in and the entire wheel is full, he realizes that he is in the leftmost cab and will go down first. So we want to write an equation that models this. So I always find with word problems, it's, it's best to sketch a diagram. So I'm gonna actually sketch a Ferris wheel. Not a great diagram of it, but whatever. So we've got the ground here, we've got the wheel, and the cabs will be on the wheel and they will be turning, all right? So we know that Mr. Charest starts at the leftmost cab and will be going down first. So here is the leftmost cab and it's gonna be spinning that way. So that's what we know. Oops, that was my cat. Bumped into the tripod. Uh, so we know the height of the cab, the highest cab is 64 feet high. So that's 64. We know the lowest cab is eight feet above the ground. So that's eight feet. So I'm just gonna extend that, extend that. So I'm just making an X and a Y axis. Our x-axis is going to be time, and our y-axis is going to be height. Because pretty much any time you have time as a variable, it's going to be your x-axis. And it also makes sense that our vertical height is going to be our y-axis. That's our vertical axis. So what's happening is, at time zero, you're exactly in the middle or I'm exactly in the middle of the problems about me. And I'm going down, then up, then down, then up. So that's the motion I'll take. As you're going around the circle, as you go around, you're going down, then up, then down, or I'm sorry, down, then up. Then at, once you reach the peak, you're down again, Till you reach the bottom, then you're up again, and that's what's happening. You're following along this sinusoidal motion. So we have a maximum at 64, a minimum at eight. That's a total height, 64 minus eight is 56. So that's a total height of 56 feet. So smack dab in the middle of that is our axis of wave. And from the top to the axis of the wave is an amplitude. And from the bottom to the axis of the wave is an amplitude. So our amplitude is half our height, half of 56 is 28. And the axis of the wave is 28 feet above eight, 28 feet below 64, well, if you add 28 to 8 to go 28 feet above 8, you get 36. Oops, y equals 36. If you subtract 28 from 64, you get 36. So it checks out both ways. And our amplitude is A. Our axis of the wave is K. And our form is y equals 
a either sine or cosine of bx plus k. So now we just need b. Well, b we get from our period is equal to 2 pi over b. And we need to figure out how long one full rotation is, one full cycle is. So from here to here, that's going to be one period. Well, let's look back at the problem. It tells us once every cab is loaded, the ride takes four minutes and completes 12 revolutions. Well, each revolution, that's one time around. That's one full cycle. So each revolution is a period. Anytime you see revolution, you should think period. So one revolution is a period. So if it's four minutes to complete 12 revolutions, well, four minutes is equal to 240 seconds. And that's going to be 12 periods. So if that's 12 periods, divide both sides by 12, one period would equal 20 seconds. All right? If you also said one period equals one third of a minute, that's fine. It doesn't matter. Okay? You just have to be consistent with what your x values are in. If you're working with minutes, your x values, your time values need to be in terms of minutes. If you're working with seconds, your x values need to be in terms of seconds. Now, I'm just going to look ahead. The second question is it's in terms of minutes, but the third one's in terms of seconds. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to work in terms of seconds. So one period is 20 seconds. So 2 pi over b equals 20 seconds. Oops, a little off to the side. So multiply by b. 2 pi equals 20b. And b equals 2 pi over 20, which simplifies to pi over 10. So we have a, a is 28. We have b, b is pi over 10. We have k, k is 36. So we have a, b, and k. Now we just need to figure out if it's sine or cosine and if it's positive or negative. So it starts at the axis of the wave. On the y-axis, it's at the axis of the wave. That means it's a sine. A cosine either starts at a maximum or a minimum. A sine starts at the axis of the wave. And it's going down first. Normally, a sine function goes up first, so it's the opposite. So it's a negative sine. So our function is y equals negative 28 sine of pi over 10 x plus 36. That equation models the graph. That equation models your height over time. So that's what we'll use for the next two. Next, we just have to plug them in. All right. So one minute is 60 seconds. So that's what we're going to plug into here. Y equals negative 28 sine of pi over 10 times 60 plus 36. So negative 28 sine. Well, 60 divided by 10 is 6, so it's just 6 pi. Now, hold on a second. 6 pi, that's 3 times 2 pi. And 2 pi is one full revolution. That's the same as not going anywhere, right? So you're doing three full revolutions around. So it makes sense that you would end up at the same place where you started. So we should be at 36 feet high, 
which is how high we were when we started, because we were at the axis of the wave. That's where we should be. Now, if we solve this to figure it out, we can just use our calculator and make sure we're in radian mode. <clears throat> so I, I have my calculator here. It's, it's different than my usual one. My usual one's still at school, because uh, I didn't think to grab it. And even though I like that calculator much better than this one. So we're doing negative 28 sine of six pi. Okay, I can't punch him under this under the screen. I gotta hold it closer to my face because the screen's not great. All right. So I don't know if you guys can see, but look at that, 36, it does work out, fantastic. And you guys have calculators too. You can also do it on your phone. I would show you, but I'm using my phone to record. So that kind of, uh, that, that's not how this works, that I can't do both. Uh, but yeah, we get 36 feet. And then for the next one, y equals negative 28 sine of pi over 10 times 35 seconds plus 36 because we're looking for the height after 35 seconds well 35 over 10 can simplify to uh, five uh sorry seven over two so it's y equals negative 28 sine of seven pi over two if you hear that noise that's just my cat playing with his food bowl uh so now we just punch that in Give me a moment. And at, when we punch that in, we get 64. There we go. Fantastic. So that's how you would solve this one. Uh, let me know if you have any questions.